This time, let's take a look at a kind of word problem um, known as a cryptorhythm. And so it looks something like this, uh, where we substitute numerical digits for each letter uh, in the puzzle. So given this problem, gadget plus smart equal Batman, uh, the solution uh, would be something like this, uh, where each letter uh, is substituted for a number. So every time we see the letter A, um, the number six is going to be uh, substituted into uh, to make that word into a number. Uh, same thing here, A is six. Um, every time we see uh, the letter T here, uh, it's going to be five. So here it's a five, here it's a five, here it's a five. And so we put these things together, and the idea is uh, we can substitute any um, number for any letter, uh, but the idea is at the end when we add these together uh, for the problem, we actually get uh, the math adds up. So these numbers actually do uh, add up uh, to this third number. Um, so let's try this one. Uh, we'll do Santa minus Claus uh, equals Xmas. And so my first thoughts on this is just to go through um, each combination of numbers substituted for each letter uh, and see uh, which ones might come out with a uh, valid math problem. Uh, so let's take a look at our code. Um, first thought, uh, again, this solution may not be the uh, most optimized solution, um, but uh, my first thought uh, for a crypt cryptorhythm is go through each combination. A couple of ways to do that. One, one way uh, would just be create a for loop uh, for each uh, unique letter uh, and go through uh, the digits 0 through uh, 9 to see which ones fit and then just do a check on the math problem. So we'll start out, uh, since we have uh, Santa, we'll start out with the first, I'll go ahead and create my variable name to keep it straight, uh, S and we'll set that equal to 0 through 9 um, and thinking about it uh, since it's the first letter uh, usually we don't use leading zeros uh, in our decimal number so we wouldn't say like uh, 0 1 plus 2 uh, equals 3 uh, we live off z leading zeros so since s is actually the first letter uh, uh, in a word let's start it uh, at 1 uh, so we'll, we'll just eliminate 0 um, since it since we don't want to put zero in the first uh, letter and we'll stop that at nine and of course get there by one uh, and then we'll just create a bunch of nested for loops uh, here for each letter so the next letter would be a uh, so we'll create a and that one since it's the second letter we'll go uh, zero through nine and of course get there by one and we'll just keep n nesting these for loops uh, for each letter. So the next one uh, would be N and then T and then be careful don't do A again because we already have an A uh, so we'll skip over A. The next one will actually be C uh, so we'll go again uh, C we're going to go from 1 uh, to 9 um, since C is the beginning of one of the words we don't want a leading zero there um, it doesn't save us a lot of uh, execution time, but it saves us a little bit. Uh, and we'll do, of course, uh, go to get there by one, C++, um, and so on. Okay, so we'll keep going, L, um, U, uh, X, M. Okay, uh, and so we're going to go through all these uh, nested for loops to find every combination uh, of those numbers and within the for loop we still have some more checking because we don't necessarily want there to be duplicate numbers so we're gonna have to check for that so what I'll do is just check each one against the other uh, again first thing I'm thinking of maybe not the most efficient way of doing this uh, so we'll just make sure s uh, is not equal to the next uh, number uh, within that variable so we'll say not equal to a um, but then we also have to check S against uh, the next number, so we'll check, um, again, logical and here, S not equal to uh, N. 
and then we'll have to do that for every other letter uh, in the series so we'll just continue going uh, not equal to T and so on uh, until we've compared uh, S to every uh, letter there is all the way up to M uh, and then that doesn't take care of everything uh, because now we've compared S to everything but what about A? Uh, we want to make sure A uh, is not equal to uh, N uh, and not equal to T uh, so on down the line uh, so we have one less check because we've already compared it to S uh, but we still have quite a few uh, checks here and then we got to go to the next one, N. We haven't compared, we've compared N to S and A, but not to T yet. So uh, we'll do another if statement, uh, not equal to T, uh, so on down the line uh, to M. And we'll just keep doing that uh, until we have uh, eliminated any duplicates. So we'll just continue uh, doing that until we have uh, the last of all those if statements. And already I'm thinking there's probably a better way to do this, but we'll come back to that later uh, and maybe look at optimizing this code, code a little bit. Okay, so we've got all our comparisons. Uh, we make sure there's not any duplicates. Uh, the other check we need to do is make sure the math adds up. Uh, so we need another if statement to say, okay, for um, S there, uh, Santa, that's going to be um, in the 10,000s location um, and so we're going to have to multiply that times 10,000 uh, to represent that placeholder for that number and we'll add that to uh, the next letter would be A okay and that is going to be multiplied times 1,000 uh, plus the next letter N times and this time it's in the hundreds place so times 100 and then plus t uh, times 10 uh, plus and don't forget we'll have a again but it'll be by itself uh, it's in the ones place so just a added in one more time uh, to get the total value for that first word uh, then we'll take that whole thing and of course we're supposed to do minus so we'll do minus and then we'll start on the next uh, word we'll start with c and that'll be multiplied times since there's five letters in the word. Uh, C will again be in the ten thousands place, so t times ten thousand uh, plus uh, next letter is L uh, times one thousand uh, plus A. Uh, that'll be times uh, hundred. Uh, the U times ten and the S added in. Uh, and then we'll make a comparison to see uh, if that's equal to and then we'll do our, our word on the right side and so X uh, times a thousand plus M times a hundred uh, plus A times ten and plus uh, S and the ones column so we'll make that comparison uh, and if that's true we should have a valid solution in here um, so just like in some of the previous videos let me create uh, a solution count here so I'm just going to create an integer so I can count how many valid solutions I have just in case there's more than one um, so solution count equals zero and then we'll do uh, solution count plus plus uh, as the first thing if we if we happen to get inside this uh, if loop I'm assuming there's a solution um, and then C out uh, we'll say uh, there were uh, solution count uh, numbers of solutions okay and that'll take care of that now we actually want to print each solution on the screen uh, so that's fairly simple we'll just go in here and do C out uh, and then we'll do each number uh, so I'll do an S uh, A N uh, T A and I'll go ahead and put that on one line on the next line I'll put my minus and do our second word here letter by letter and of course then there should be an equal sign and then I'll put uh, the last line here okay and in line just so we separate uh, out each solution will be printed across uh, a single line uh, and that's you know um, 
uh, a good first shot at it. Maybe not the most the, uh, efficient uh, way of doing this, but let's uh, fire it up and see what happens. And what we get uh, is definitely more than one solution here. Uh, we got one off the screen up there, but uh, uh, 26 solutions um, for uh, Santa minus clause equals Xmas. And so uh, there are 26 possible solutions uh, for this. Took a little bit of time here, 3.6 uh, seconds. Uh, so a lot of that is we're going through all these combinations of loops uh, and then we're checking for duplicates and one of the things we can look at, this is probably a good example uh, as far as uh, trying to optimize your code. Uh, in other words, we don't, we, we're going through um, a lot of different times in these loops if we think about how it's going and then checking for duplicates. Um, whereas if we move some of these if statements up with our fours, uh, we can skip whole iterations of this for loop. Uh, so for example, um, let's get rid of all those and we're going to move them uh, up into the for loop. So we're going to need to add some braces here um, for the for loops because we're going to have multiple statements in there and then we'll add the closing braces. And then what we'll do is we'll come up here and say if, uh, and so what I want to do is if S and A uh, are not equal, then I want to do all these other loops, but otherwise, uh, if S not equal to A, um, skip it, right? So if, if, if it's not equal to A, that's fine. Go ahead and, and, and try out um, the other iterations, but I can skip all the rest of the nested loops for every condition that S uh, is not equal to A. And then we'll do the same thing on the next line. We'll say if, uh, now we're going to check uh, to make sure n uh, is not equal to a. Uh, and uh, we also have to check n against s. Okay, so we still have to um, check multiple conditions once we get down to here. We'll do the same thing for t. Uh, as long as t is not equal to a, uh, n not equal to s, n not equal to uh, n. So we keep keep uh, doing this for all the rest of them and so we'll add these if statements um, along with the for loops and that should help us a little bit performance wise uh, as we uh, skip a lot of the iterations of the inner for loops uh, by kind of jumping over it once we detect a duplicate there's no need to continue uh, processing the rest of those loops. Um, and so for our last one we need to check M uh, against everything else um, and then our other condition, the math problem is the same, we still got to make sure it's a valid math solution. Um, and that should be a little bit more efficient, still probably uh, not the most optimized solution but better than our first uh, shot at this. Uh, so let's go ahead and execute, compile, and run. And we get a little bit uh, faster time here, uh, a little under half a second here, or a quarter of a second. Uh, and we get, we still get 26 solutions, so we must have gotten all our uh, if statements right. Same, same set of solutions, just a little bit faster. Uh, so there are always different ways of looking at problems and some uh, will execute faster than others. Um, so not, not too big a deal. Um, one other problem I see with our solution here is it's not a general solution so we can't just feed in another uh, cryptorhythmic problem and uh, have it solve it. So um, if we wanted to do this again uh, for a different set we would have to re, uh, redo the whole solution. Uh, so, for instance, if I wanted to do a different problem where we have Easter plus Fiesta uh, equals day off, um, I mean pretty much the same structure. Um, in this one, uh, I did make some changes uh, so the letters match up, uh, E, A. Uh, I did have to add one more loop because we're dealing with one more um, loop here, but now we're at the maximum, so there's 10 different letters, 10 different numbers. 
Um, and so I have a different uh, set and I had to make some minor modifications before and recompile this. So uh, there's, there's probably a more uh, elegant way of doing this. Um, so uh, for Easter plus Fiesta equals day off, let's see what that comes up with. We'll compile it on that. And that problem comes out with uh, about six solutions and here's the solution set for those. Um, so just kind of, you know, a little bit of fun with programming and uh, doing, solving some puzzles with that. So uh, hopefully this was fun and uh, I'll see you next time.